Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we've got another Mustang Mach-E video, and today I want to talk about charging costs and how much it costs me to drive my Mustang Mach-E 15,000 miles. So I want to give you a little backstory on how I calculated this number in case you want to do a similar calculation for your electric car or your future electric car, and you're kind of wondering how does it actually compare to gas. Um, so just to start, I want to talk about there's three different types of electric vehicle charging generally three levels, level one, two, and three. Um, and the different levels are gonna really dictate the price and how much it costs to charge. So level one charging, uh, that's just a standard 110 volt outlet. Gonna be very slow, but very simple. Yes, you actually can charge an electric car from a 110 volt outlet. It's just gonna take a long time. I'll tell you how much uh, in a second. Um, level two charging, that can also be at home. Uh, think 220 volt circuit. Uh, like your electric dryer, electric range, uh, circuits like that, you know, in that 30 to 50 amp range, 220 volt generally. Um, and then you're also going to find those out in the public, maybe at a mall, at a library, parking garage. Uh, generally, a lot of those are level two charging as well. And then level three, uh, also called DC fast charging, that's the charging you're going to find along interstates and that you're going to use primarily when you're road tripping and you want to recharge your car very quickly. So my Mustang Mach-E has the standard range battery. So it's about 70 kilowatt hours or so, you know, zero to hundred percent is roughly 70 kilowatt hours. Um, I'm going to use numbers of 10% to 80% when talking about charging times and costs, just because you're generally not going to go to zero to hundred percent, but you're, you know, obviously going to have a big charge. Uh, so level one charging, uh, you know, going 10% to 80% with my Mustang Mach-E, it's about 37 hours. Um, so you're getting about 1.3 kilowatts or so uh, added for every hour that you charge. Level two charging, uh, you know, that's where you start talking about overnight charging, you know, kind of in the, you know, six to 10 hour range, depending on uh, what kind of amperage you're running and then uh, how much charge you need to add. Uh, and then level three charging, that's going to be your fastest one. That's where, you know, my Mustang Mach-E, you're going to be in that 25 to 45 minute range depending on your state of charge um, and so all those different levels uh, come with a different price uh, level three charging is the most expensive uh, because you're paying for that speed convenience and so you can be paying anywhere from 30 to 60 cents per kilowatt hour you know as of 2024 roughly depending on where you live depending on where the charger is you can lower those costs uh, electrify america has a pass plus option for $7 a month, you can lower that cost per kilowatt hour by 25%. Uh, Tesla offers a similar thing. So, you know, if you're starting to get adapters for your electric vehicle to be able to charge a CCS car with the Tesla NAX connector on the supercharger network, Tesla has a plan as well for $12.99 a month to lower that cost a little bit. But it's still going to be more expensive than charging at your house, most likely. For my Mustang Mach-E, if I was going 10% to 80%, you know, what that really means is I'm gonna be paying anywhere from like 20 to $30 uh, to refill it. And so uh, working backwards, so going back to level two charging, uh, that's gonna vary a lot, probably the most of all of them, both in terms of speed, but also in terms of charging cost. So, you know, charging at home, it's gonna be whatever your home electric rate is. I think the national average is somewhere around 15 cents per kilowatt hour, but it really varies by state. So you really need to go look at your home energy bill and see how much you would be paying uh, per kilowatt hour and then multiply that by say 50 kilowatt hours for, for you know, a Mach-E standard range or whatever electric vehicle of choices and you could get a rough feel for how much it would cost to, to refill your car. So if you were gonna add 50 kilowatt hours at 10 cents a kilowatt hour, you know, that's gonna be $5. And then level one charging is gonna be similar cost to level two charging. Um, there's really no difference there. It's just gonna be whatever your home electric rate is. Um, and then in public charging, um, it's not generally gonna be as much as the DC fast charging option, the level three, but it can still be expensive, you know, somewhere in that uh, 20 to 30 cents per kilowatt hour, or they may charge by time. You know, if you go park somewhere for two hours, it might be a dollar an hour or something like that. I live in Idaho, and so I have a sweet deal on two sides. One, my home energy rates are really pretty reasonable. Um, in the summertime, it's like 10 to 11 cents per kilowatt hour, and then in the wintertime, it's around eight cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, so very inexpensive. 
And then I have an even better option at my work. I have a level two option at work where I pay six cents per kilowatt hour. So it's not free, but it's darn close. And there's no other fees on top of that. And, you know, for my Mustang Mach-E, you know, that's like three to $4. Uh, the next piece of this is efficiency. So just like in a gas car, you know, generally measuring that in miles per gallon, you know, you have a similar thing where uh, electric cars a lot of times report miles per kilowatt hour or watt hours per mile. I'm gonna talk about miles per kilowatt hour because that's what the Mach-E shows and that's kind of what I'm more used to thinking about. Um, but a lot of times my efficiency, if it's really poor winter time or higher speeds, you know, it's on the very low end, roughly two miles per kilowatt hour, maybe a little bit higher. So I, so in my work situation, I can go two miles uh, for six cents, basically. Um, and then when things warm up or I'm going more around town at slower speeds, I'm in that three to four miles per kilowatt hour. And so, you know, I'm going almost twice as far um, so I'm going to show you two tables here um, because I don't have the exact number um, as far as how much it cost me over 15,000 miles. That's maybe one interesting thing. It's not really that big of a deal, but for a gas car, it's pretty easy to track exactly how much money you're spending going into the gas car. You just write down or, you know, electrically log all your uh, receipts or whatever from filling up at the gas station. How many miles did you go? And that's it, it's pretty simple. But electric cars, yeah, it's a similar concept, but when you're sometimes plugging in at home, sometimes plugging in at work, uh, maybe you got a free charge in town somewhere, maybe you parked at a parking garage for an hour, that was 50 cents or something. So it, it gets very difficult to track all of those different numbers. And so these tables are just hopefully gonna show uh, roughly where I am and uh, I still think it's a pretty accurate number generally. Efficiency, like I mentioned, is the other big piece of this. So in the first table here, you know, I've got 15,000 miles, and then the efficiency is on the left there, two miles per kilowatt hour up to three and a half miles per kilowatt hour. And along the top, I have a uh, cost of electricity per kilowatt hour. So the cheapest option, my work there at six cents. And then you can see, you know, if you're DC fast charging a lot, you know, at say 56 cents, that's what my local DC fast charger is, Electrify America, if you don't have that monthly membership. Um, so you can see the cost varies a lot, and then the efficiency changes things a lot too. So I do a lot of charging at work, but I also do charge at home a decent amount, um, either when I can't charge at work, or, you know, I need to top things up because I, I drove a lot. Then my efficiency, the trips in the Mach-E, I'm not totally convinced they're accurate. I've seen those numbers go up and down the miles per kilowatt hour. And so the original trip that I reset in the last video, uh, I think it said 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour was like my average over the first 13, 14,000 miles. Um, I don't think that number is totally wrong, but I'm not convinced it's totally accurate. Um, you know, in the winter time, yeah, that's probably about right, somewhere in the 2.5, 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. In the summer, that number is over three miles per kilowatt hour. It can be 3.1 to 3.3 in a lot of cases. So I'm not convinced that 2.6 is my actual average over all that time. But yeah, just to look at the table, I mean, I'm probably somewhere around $500 for how much I've spent over 15,000 miles. I might be a little bit more. Um, I might be a little bit less, you know, kind of depending on what my actual efficiency is, but I'm somewhere in there. So uh, not too bad. Okay, so the second table I wanna show you is uh, gas mileage and price per gallon, and trying to come up with an equivalent for if the Mustang Mach-E was gas. Now, there are a lot of really efficient gas cars, especially if it's a hybrid option like a Prius. Those cars don't really have the performance the Mach-E does. Um, now, the Mach-E isn't blowing the doors off a Tesla Model S Plaid or anything like that, but it's, it's no slouch, this is not the GT but it's still zero to 60 in five-ish seconds or so. You know, I think you have to keep that in mind if you were buying a similar size SUV and you wanted that performance, you're not gonna be getting 40 miles per gallon. You're probably gonna be getting mid 20s, maybe 30 on a good day, but winter time or, you know, higher speed driving, you're probably gonna be getting mid, maybe high 20s. And so that's why I chose the miles per gallon I did on the left um, I think you'd at least get 20, no doubt. 
And uh, I would have a hard time believing you would go much higher than 30 for an equivalent gas car with that performance. To spend $500, um, you know, at 25 miles per gallon, that would be like filling up over that time for 84 cents per gallon. Um, gas hasn't been that low in a very long time. And then kind of at the other extreme end of the table is, you know, as far as I've owned this car where I've lived, gas has been generally between three and four dollars a lot of that time. So if we just average that to three dollars and fifty cents a gallon, you know, that's roughly two thousand uh, dollars for gas at uh, 25 mpg. Then you can make the argument, well, I don't really care about the performance, and you know, my car gets 35 mpg or whatever. Sure, uh, but at 350 a gallon, that's still fifteen hundred dollars over that same period of time. You know, I think. It's pretty safe to say, you know, I've saved, considering the performance and equivalent MPG, I've saved probably fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars over that first fifteen thousand miles. And so, you know, just bring both tables back up now. Uh, you know, what does this mean for you? And if you're considering this, uh, well, you really have to consider what your electric rate is. That's the biggest thing, and where you're going to be filling up. If you have a really high electric rate at home, and you could fill up there. Um, you know, that, that's still kind of a tough sell because that is the most convenient place to charge. Um, if you don't have a home option and you're going to be relying on public charging, um, that may be okay if you have a workplace charger like I do. Uh, but a lot of times that's going to be kind of annoying and you're probably going to be paying a premium. And then, you know, if really your only option is DC fast charging all of the time or most of the time, that's going to get very expensive. So you're really going to have to look at your home electric rates and uh, you know, kind of make a determination there. Okay, so all that sounds pretty good, but there are three things that do eat into my savings there a little bit. I'm still saving significant money, but there are three things you also need to consider that are gonna eat into your savings compared to gas. So the first one is um, uh, vehicle registration. So to get license plates, have it be registered and everything, uh, at least here in Idaho, there's a premium for electric cars because you're not paying uh, for gasoline, so there aren't any taxes baked into that. So, you know, to maintain the roads. For my mach -E, I just registered it again here in Idaho. It was $140 premium over if this was a gas car. So that's fairly significant, especially, you know, considering what your electric rates are, how much you're driving. The next one is charging equipment. So, uh, you know, you don't have to buy your own gas pump or anything. Uh, you just show up and somebody else takes care of all those costs, maintaining it, repairing it. Um, you're going to have some costs if you're doing home charging generally. Um, my mach -E came with the Ford mobile charger and I'm using it on a level one outlet. So that was really no cost to me. I just plugged it in. It works. Um, but if you're going to get a level two installation, uh, you can use the charger that came with the car, or you can buy a different one that gives you higher power, has more options, but that's going to cost some money, you know, several hundred dollars for the charger itself. Um, you can also spend a lot more than that. And then you're going to have some amount of installation costs, mostly, unless your house is already wired with a, you know, NEMA 1450 220 volt outlet in your garage. Um, but if it's not, you're going to have to pay to put one in. Um, you know, that's going to run you at least a few hundred dollars. Uh, potentially a lot more. In my case, I don't have level two here because our electric panel would have to be upgraded to a 200 amp service. We only have a 100 amp service. And so that was going to be, when I got the quote, it was like $3,200, I think, to upgrade the whole panel, uh, go, switch to 200 amp service, and put a NEMA 1450 in the garage. Uh, that's a pretty significant cost, and maybe down the road, I will look into that, but since my work charging option works so well and the electric rate there is lower, I've stuck with that. But just something to keep in mind, you may have some upfront costs there to set up home charging. And then the third one is charging is not 100% efficient. So if I said, you know, hey, I, I want to put 50 kilowatt hours into my battery, that's going to cost me, you know, $5 or whatever at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, that's roughly correct. but not 100% of that energy is going to go into the battery. Some of it's going to go into warming up the battery uh, just to get the battery at the right temperature so it can charge at a you know good rate. And then also just energy losses of resistance through the cable and into the battery. So I, I don't know what those exact numbers are, but just general research is that charging is somewhere between 80 and 90% efficient. So just to keep it simple, you know, you kind of have to take, you know, add 10% 
you know, you might really need to do 52 kilowatt hours to actually get 50 kilowatt hours in your battery, for example. So I think I'm somewhere between $1,200 and $1,300 ahead uh, after 15,000 miles, primarily due to the low electric rates. That six cents a kilowatt hour is a sweet deal. And even 10 cents a kilowatt hour at home is not bad at all. I also haven't had any charging equipment costs, which is great too. But I did have to pay more for vehicle registration because of its being an electric vehicle, like I mentioned. If you have an EV, you know, let me know what your electric rates are in your area. You know, how much is it costing you to charge? Uh, do you think you're ahead or behind gas, you know, based on where you live? Yeah, that's it for today's video. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.